In this episode, Christian sees things. Oh no, I, I do see particles. There's, you see? Particles, they are appearing. <gasps> and then we get a lot more of them. Okay, okay. And then they'll turn all pretty. See how this looks? Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, everybody. Ah, uh, yeah, finishing this up. <sighs> Hi, everybody. I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Devs Academy. Welcome to um, this little schmuck tutorial that we're doing. We are deep in the task of making juice. We're squeezing juice out of this lemon. Let me show you what I mean. Uh, we have a little schmuck, an awesome schmuck. And we have like this little nice effect of wood and it gets hit. And then we have a little explosion. And that explosion doesn't... Mm, it looks a bit choppy. It is a very sudden, very quick explosion that doesn't quite like it's... Mm, and also if we want to have a longer explosion, an explosion that goes for a long, for longer time, it kind of like it gets very, very choppy. And it doesn't quite look right. And so today I wanted to maybe focus more on uh, ways of making this explosion uh, be procedural. So basically, oh, by the way, we kind of have to remove this now, the to-do list. We're going to remove the hit reaction. We kind of already had that. Uh, I want to have procedural generate procedurally generated explosions. Uh, and I also want to, this is maybe for later, I want maybe um, bullet collision effects. Right. So procedural generated um, explosion. Basically what we're doing today is particles. And I don't know. It's, it's kind of like a thing that particles are just, for some reason, super fun. Like there's, I already talked about how one of the things that is very, very not fun to program is uh, UI. U UI usually takes a long time, it's difficult to pull this off, and it's just like this very, very slow slug. Uh, particles are the exact opposite. Particles are super fun. Uh, sadly, particles are also a little bit of a rabbit hole. I've seen whole projects being just tanked by the fact that it was just too much fun to program your particle system and people just like changed their game into, I'm not gonna actually make a game anymore, I'm just gonna make a particle system. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna do particles today. Now in order to do particles, I'm, I'm with, a, with a sad heart, I'm gonna actually remove our explosion system. I don't wanna do the explosion system anymore. I want to do a different system now, and this system now is going to be our particle system. What is a particle? Well, the thing is, a particle can be anything we want. Technically, the explosion that we did, this little, just like showing this huge sprite, right? Just like this animation, that could be seen as a particle, right? That could be a particle. Um, we're going to begin with very, very simple particle, the kind of like the simplest particle that we uh, can think of. And again, that's actually kind of something what we did. We have stars, like we have the stars in the background. These couldn't be seen as a type of particle system. So we, this all stuff that we already are familiar with. We're just gonna use it not to draw like stars in the background. We're gonna use particles to have an explosion happening. Okay, so let us start. Um, so I'm gonna create a new array and that array is gonna be the particle array. I'm just gonna call it part. I don't like the abbreviation part because it looks like we're we're talking about a part of a thing, not a particle. If you have a better idea of how to call this, let me know. Maybe maybe I will adapt this. But yeah, just call this let's just call it part for now. So this is gonna be kind of like our array of particles. Now we're gonna actually uh, use this function that we had before where uh, in the previous episode, you may have already seen it, uh, we had a this explode function, and that explode function created like this, this little animation that we have. I'm gonna comment all of this stuff out for now. Uh, later on, we're gonna actually probably delete it because I don't want to use um, this animation as, as like the sprite animation as explosions. I wanna transition to uh, particle systems. Uh, but I want to maybe keep this around for now because it gives, it, it gives us a template of what we want to achieve. We want to start uh, you know, with, with kind of like a blinding flash. And then uh, that flash kind of expands and then transitions to, uh, in colors. It goes from white to uh, yellow to orange to red, and then eventually turns into individual blobs of clouds, something like this. And want to achieve this maybe with particles. But for now, 
Um, let us just create a particle. My, uh, I'm going to call this local my p, my particle. I'm going to go my p uh, dot x equals, let's just put it like here, and my p dot y. Let's just create the simplest particle possible. We just basically take the uh, coordinates of the explosion and we're just going to plug in into the uh, property x and y of the particle. Okay, and then we're going to add this particle to our I'm going to add this to our particle list of particles. And so we're going to go part uh, my p. We maybe should call this parts particles. Parts, because it, um, so far our naming scheme was always the s at the end. So we know that this is multiple things. So let's call this parts. Uh, parts my p. Okay, just adding a very simple particle. And I just want to see something on the screen for now. This is like always a good start. Just I want to see something on the screen. We're going to go now to the draw function. Uh, let's see, where did we have the explosions? Uh, drawing bullets. That's not bullets. Oh man, that's explosions. Now I'm going to keep the code around for now, um, but I'm going to drawing part. Because I'm going to keep this. I'm going to create a new a section here that deals just with particles and, and we're just going to do the same thing that we did here uh, for my p we're going to go through all of the parts right parts the the array of particles i'm going to go go through all of them you're going to do a little loop and for each particle we're going to put, put that particle in like a little helper variable and execute uh, this code inside of this loop uh, and then we're just going to do like a P set. We're going to like with the stars, you know, when we're drawing the stars um, up here. Star field, right? When we're drawing a star field, we're just going to, we're just setting the, a, a, a single pixel at a position. So we're going to do the same thing right here. And when we, in uh, particles, we're going to go my P, uh, uh, P set. There we go. Uh, setting a single pixel, my P dot X my p dot y we already had this so many times before and you can already see the patterns it's always kind of like the same thing we're just going through a, a array of objects we're grabbing information from those objects and drawing something on the screen based of information usually it is the x and y position but maybe something sometimes um some more information comes come in and then here uh, we have the color seven we're gonna make it just all white for now and we're gonna see how that looks just like i'm gonna see a particle did not happen. I don't see a particle. What is happening? Why? Is oh no! I, I do see particles. There, you see the particles. They are appearing. <gasps> yeah, yeah. There's like white dots on the screen. Good. This looks awful. <laughs> this is bad. This is so bad. Uh, one of the reasons why it's bad is that it, it's just like a pixel. It just, it's like, like there, it's not moving. It's it's just a single thing. We want to have more of them, and we want to have them moving. So first of all, let's address the moving thing. Uh, let's go into our explosion function here. And let us give those particles a speed variable, like a s, s speed to x and speed y variable. So my p dot sx uh, equals, um, we're just gonna give it a random number for now, for now. Uh, and the same thing as y, again, we're gonna give it a random number. I'm just going to put a random number in speed and we're going to think about how to tweak this later. Um, now, this is the part where we actually are updating, um, you know, again, I already talked about this. Um, you, we could go in the update function and have a like, little update particles function happening, but I don't think it's necessary here because this is, you know, all... I'm not sure if we should do this. I don't think we need this. Let's just do it in, all in a draw function. Uh, so yeah, here uh, where we are drawing the particles, here. We're just going to also move the particles. So we basically go, let's do it after we draw them. Or maybe before, no, let's do it after we draw. So we're going to go my p dot x plus equals my p dot s x. So we add the speed of the particle to its position. And we do the same thing with the y position. 
And again, I'm doing this in draw function um, because the particles are not gameplay relevant. So it's kind of okay to do this in, in, in draw function. As I already said, the draw function has this problem that sometimes um, the draw function uh, doesn't get called. Sometimes it's just being ignored because maybe Pico8 is busy for some reason, because maybe there's too many particles on the screen. Um, and if, you know, if gameplay relevant stuff gets dropped, then maybe the, the controls get really choppy and, and, and slow down. You feel, you, you get, a, you get a, like a slowdown effect. Uh, but for particles, I don't feel like it's, it's really that important. And to be honest, like in our game, we're probably not going to hit those limits anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm kind of like lazy at this point. I don't want to go like in, in mocking around with the update function to just to have like the particles move. I just want to have all of our particle stuff in one place and we can still move things around later when we finished. Okay, so now the particles are moving. So let's see how that works. Okay, we see a particle flying away, a single pixel. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh, let us do the second thing I was talking about. Let us just create more particles, right? So I'm going to put things all in a I loop for for next loop. I mean, so we're going to go for I. Um, let's just create hundred particles. Let's just create hundred particles, uh, and uh, put everything inside. Uh, I'm going to shift select the end, uh, the entire inner part of the of the for next loop. I'm going to press tab to indent the entire. In a, in a loop, so everything that's inside the for next loop is now indented by two. Right, so now we're basically repeating this process 100 times. Okay, okay. I mean, is it the most beautiful explosion in the world? No, it's a bit lame. It's kind of like, it's kind of like slow motion, but hey, it does not look bad. I mean, we are a bit too much, maybe. Let's, let's just tile it down to, to 20. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I, can, I, can, I can dig this. Let's just make this a bit more violent. So let's just multiply it by two. Let us just multiply the speed, then this random number that we generate. I mean, we could also do like something like this. Um, but I'm just gonna like you just to show you that you can do other kinds of math with the with this random number. You can just multiply it by two, so it's kind of like it's gonna get uh, the random number gets gets faster. Yeah. And now the explosion is bigger. Now it's always to the right and down. Why is that so? The the particles always go right and they always go down, but the explosion doesn't go in the other direction, you see? Like none of the particles go left, no, none of the particles go up. How, why is that the case? Well, the reason for that is because uh, we this random number generator only generates positive numbers. So in order for us to get negative numbers, we kind of have to subtract a number from that. So let's go minus one. So we also get negative speed and negative speed um, x and negative speed y. So they go up and to the to the left as well. Yeah. yeah that's good. Okay. Uh, now you can see we can speed this, uh, this thing up. Let's multiply it by four and um, to counteract we subtract two. Right. Hi everybody, here's Christian from the future here with a little assist. I thought I'm gonna jump in here with a little visualization uh, because the math is a bit dry and I have created this little tool in PQ8 and this allows us to look a little bit what's under the hood. Uh, right, so I want to focus on this line here, for example, this is the horizontal speed of our particles and initially we plugged in, you know, just R&D. And if we do that, uh, I'm going to create a bunch of, you know, I'm going to run this a little bit and we're going to create a bunch of dots. You can see kind of like the different results that we're going to get from this kind of equation where we see those dots appear between um, number zero and one. Now, if you plug this into the speed of the particles, the particles will all move to the right and none of the particles will move to the left because we only get positive numbers between zero and one. And so the first task that Christian, past Christian did here is trying to make it so that we also get negative numbers. And initially he multiplied by two. And what uh, multiplying by two does is just it increases the range, uh, increases the spread of the particles. Uh, but in this case, it only increases it in the positive direction. So kind of the problem gets even worse. So now the particles are spread between zero and two. 
uh, but we still have no negative particles. And so what then Christian does is he subtracts one uh, at the end. So this shifts all of the particles uh, into the negative by one, and thus gives you this even spread between minus one and one, and that's what we were looking for. Now there is a bit of a caveat here, a bit of a problem, and that is what if we then come in and we want to kind of like tweak the speed of the particles, right? What if we want to make them go faster? Well, in this case, we would have to make the sure that those blue dots are spread over a wider area, right? Uh, so an easy way to start is to just increase the blue number, something like, you know, multiply by three, right? But if we do that, and the particles get spread across a larger area, but only into the positive direction again. So we get uh, the particle spread be between minus one and positive two. And that's kind of like biased towards the positive direction again. And so in order to counteract that, we always have to tweak the pink number as well. And so you can see that if we uh, set the pink number to 1.5, we shift everything back uh, into the left direction, to negative uh, direction and we get this cent centered spread again. Um, and so there's a, like a relationship between the pink number and the blue number. Uh, the pink number has to be always the half of the blue number, and that's where you get an even spread. So every time we wanna tweak the speed of the particles, we always have to tweak both numbers at the same time, and that's a bit awkward. So when I was watching this during editing, I thought I'm gonna suggest an alternative solution, and at the same time, like this equation. So what is happening is we first subtract. So we have like the R and D function, and then we subtract 0 0.5, we take the pink number, uh, we subtract 0 0.5, and we put this subtraction into a parenthesis, so we make sure this happens first. And then afterwards, we multiply with the blue number uh, times three. And kind of like we arrange, rearrange the order of things. And this is like really neat, it's kind of like basically the same thing, as you can see, you know, the result is the same. And what this equation allows us to do is now we only have to tweak one number uh, to change the speed. So as you can see, we can make the particles get spread further apart if we increase the number or we can make them spread less if we decrease the number. So we can tweak the speed of our particles um, by just tweaking a single number. That is way more convenient. And that's something I would suggest you to use instead of what Christian in the past is using here. Yeah, so just a little visualization here and a little suggestion of you what you might try out. And, you know, as you can see, you know, this is not something where you have to get it completely right. And actually, that's something that Christian from the past uh, wanted to also point out. This is not a situation where you have to get it completely right or else, you know, no, nothing works. Like, you can just like, try numbers in here, you know, and see how it looks. Ooh. Okay, now, oh, that's actually not bad, you know. Uh, just experiment and see what works and what numbers work, work, work well for you. If you if you're not quite confident about the math, it's fine. Okay, let us let us add more numbers. Uh, let us go forty. I think uh, forty particles would be good. Yeah, that's. Good. I think I need. I want to have more speed. I want to see. I want to see more speed. So always we're subtracting always half of the number that we are multiplying with in order to get like an even spread. Yeah, okay. Okay, this is this is an explosion right now. I may be a bit too much. Let's go six and three. Let's look how how this works. Yeah. Okay, no, no, this is good. This is this is a good explosion. Now. Okay. I like it. I like it. Uh, something that we have to keep in mind is that particles also should have a lifespan. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to go my p dot h equals zero. And I want to make sure that uh, after a certain h is reached, uh, particles get deleted. So we're going to go my p dot h uh, plus equals one. We're going to increase the h. And if my p dot h is greater than 30, then so after one second, we're going to delete uh, particles and delete parts uh, my p. Again, all of the stuff that we already had, for example, here we had kind of the same thing when we did the explosion. We wanted to have to show the animation and after animation, I delete the explosion. Um, yeah, something like this. Let's see. Yeah, you can see now that particles like, are disappearing. I don't like how the particles are all disappearing at the same time. So we can also maybe, for example, add 
uh, 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 let's give every particle maximum h. That's something that you can also do. Max h. Um, so 30 plus rnd 10. Uh, a random number, we're adding a random number. Every uh, particle will have, will be on screen for at least 30 frames, but we're just gonna add some frames to it. So they're not disappearing all at the same time. And then here in the if statement in the third tab, when we're actually drawing the particles and when we're checking for their age, we're gonna go if my pH is greater than, uh, oops, geez, uh, my p dot max age. Every particle has kind of like lifespan but we kind of like randomize a little bit, so it looks a little bit more um, more organic. We could even extend this a little bit, even. Let's do it 2020, so there's a bigger spread. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a very, very simple, very, very basic uh, particle system that we de developed here. Uh, now something that also keep in mind is like, if you have too, too many particles, you can see that they're kind of square, like the, let's go 200, right? The, the, the explosion that we create is a little bit square. I just have a thousand particles, why not? Why not? You, you, we're kind of like creating a square of explosions, right? Like it's, uh, um, that's because of how we are um, uh, calculating the speed with the speed and uh, x and speed y. There's a different way of doing this, but it gets us into sine and cosine, and I don't want to go there not at this point. If you have just um, not that many particles, it looks fine. That looks fine. Now this explosion suffers a bit of, a, of the problem I was talking about. I feel like the explosion that happens uh, should be bigger than the thing that explodes. Now, technically, the particles are flowing outwards, right? So they are technically bigger than the explosion that the thing that explodes. But the t particles are tiny. Um, so it, th this object, right? This 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 alien guy. It feels like it should feel like if this is an object, like physical object that has a mass, right? It feels like this is a thing that exists, right? Like, in, like a clump of matter. And when that explodes. It feels I should see the matter chunks flying away from it. Like it's, I should feel like the, all of the particles that it explodes into, um, that they all add would add up back to the uh, to the thing that explodes. Like, or to maybe put it diff different way, if this was made out of Legos, I would want to see all of the Lego pieces flying away from it, right? Just being spread out on a, over a bigger surface. And that just doesn't quite feel this way when it's it's um, it's little, little tiny pixels. It's just like it's, it's it feels like it bursts into like these. It's just it's being pulverized basically, and it doesn't doesn't quite feel the same. So what I want to do is maybe make chunkier particles, particles that have more substance. So something I want to try now is no not to draw just uh, pixels. I want to draw circles. Um, so let's do that. So when we're drawing the particles, instead of drawing P set, I can just draw a circ fill. We already talked about this. So we have like this function circ that draws a circle and circ fill and draws a filled circle. This uh, circle circle is filled with a color. Um, and the uh, parameters are x, y, and then the uh, radius of the circle. Let's just go two for now and let's see what happens. And the color is going to be seven for now. Let's, let's just like see how that looks. Yeah. So now you see like this has a lot more substance. And in fact, we probably don't need as many particles now anymore. So maybe we can actually go down now with with the amount of particles. Let's just go ten, and maybe don't don't need to be as fast anymore. And you, as you can see, once you tweak one parameter, you kind of like have to also tweak the other parameter. It's all interconnected. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. Okay, maybe more particles after all. Yeah. Now this looks like a, like a cloud of gases explodes, right? Maybe a little bit faster after all. Maybe a bit faster after all. Maybe three, three, one point five. Yeah. 
Uh, let's go 30 on a particle. It's just more particles. Because if they're moving faster, then... Yeah. Okay. So something we want to maybe add now is maybe a uh, color animation. Because right now they're just like these um, white puffy clouds. But maybe you want them to start white and then uh, cycle through different colors as they age, right? So let's tr try to do that right here, right? So let us just do uh, something like a local variable called part C, particle color, or let's just call it PC, particle color, uh, and just plug it into our circle function, okay? And then just let's say if my p dot h is greater than five, then PC equals, uh, let's turn it into yellow, 10. Something like this. Just let simple if statement. And that's good. That's good. You, you saw it. It's, it starts with white. Oops. It starts white and then it turns yellow. So let's just continue this. We're going to go else if my p dot h is greater than uh, let's go 10. 10. PC. Uh, let's set it to um, orange, nine. Will that work? I'm not sure. So this didn't work. And why didn't it work? I was already kind of expecting this because all the particles that are older than 10 are also older than five. So all the all particles that are older than 10 are already turned into yellow and never, never turned into, they don't never have the opportunity to get turned into orange because this else if is never being triggered because this first statement is always true for those particles. So, I mean, a simple solution for that is just going to be in, uh, just like don't combine the two statements, just make them into two separate if statements. Let's, let's see how that works. Okay, you can see how there's already a bit of a gradient happening. Let's continue this process. This is not efficient, but we just like, you know, putting down some code to see kind of how things look. We put, turn this into eight when it's greater than 15. And we turn this into, if it's greater than 20, we turn this into uh, this dark color too. And then if it's greater than 25, we turn this into a gray, uh, 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 this, this smoke kind of color. So this is gonna be color number five. Just a whole bunch of if statements that check for different ages of the particles and set the color um, correspondingly to different, uh, different numbers. Good. Now maybe this is all a bit too slow. So maybe I want this to be a bit more sudden so I can kind of tweak those numbers. Let's, let's see if we can tweak those numbers a little bit. Let's go this already at seven. And uh, this is going to be already at 10. And then this is going to be at 15. Let's see that, how that works. Oh, yeah. And so this looks better, I think, because uh, you kind of want to see a sudden flash and then the smoke phase, kind of like it feels like the smoke is something that should persist for longer. This is something that remains after the explosion and it will be on the screen for longer. Whereas the actual explosion where the fireball, that's something that should be only there for a brief amount of time because it's like, it, you know, it's like a sudden explosion, whereas the smoke slowly then f fades away, right? So this feels right now. You have like sudden explosion and then kind of like this longer smoke phase. Now, something I don't like about those particles, they, they all look very uniform and they suddenly disappear. So I want to start tweaking the uh, the size maybe of the particles. Let's, let's see if we can do this. So let's see, and you can see how this is going. You know, we just keep adding more stuff to the particle, right? We just keep track more more and more things are being kept track of. So for example, something we can add here, my p dot size. And we are gonna just give it two for now. And when we draw the particles, 
uh, here in the circle fill. Instead of the two here, that's the size of the of the um, of the circle we're drawing. We're gonna gonna plug in my p dot um, uh, size. Nothing will change. I just want to see this working. Okay, this works. Now I want to see. If we can see that how we can just have bigger explosions, uh, but also we can have it a bit of randomized. So let's go one plus R and D two. So at least size one, but then we also add a number from zero and two. Ah, you can see how. Oh, this is, this looks now. This looks a little more more varied now. This is good. Maybe even even some of the like just let's just experiment. Let's keep adding more stuff. Yeah, see how this looks. Oh, hmm. Maybe I want to actually have now uh, more more speed happening. Let, let, let's turn this into four four two two. Yeah, uh, it's a bit too big now. It's a bit too. But maybe we can tweak this with H, so the maximum H is uh, is going to be reduced maybe a little bit. Uh, let's let's reduce it to ten. Maybe even like this. Now, something, another thing I don't like here is that um, all the colors are in sync. All the particles change the colors in sync with each other. You know, you see all of them age at the same time. So, you know, they all start white and they all then turn in unison, they all turn yellow, and then in unison, they turn orange, right? In order to kind of like tweak this a little bit, we can start them at different ages. So they kind of like all uh, offset a little bit from each other. And you know, this is get we're getting into shenanigans now, right now. You can you can already tell where this, that this is getting, getting a little bit. Yeah, you can see now there's just more variety in the explosion, right? Maybe the five was a bit too much. Uh, let's put two in here. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, I still feel like it, the speed should be higher. I feel like this is, the explosion is not violent enough. Ah, yeah. And then uh, if the explosion is more violent, then we need the lifespan has to be shorter so they don't fly away as, as far. But now we're getting into very short-lived particles. Maybe you have to also t start tweaking this stuff again. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe you have to go back. Maybe you have to go back. Maybe six, maybe four was the right number here. Yeah, I, maybe we can keep this around. And there's a different way we can we can tweak this around later. Uh, but for now, I want to also do something else. I want when particles uh, age. Here, when they reach their maximum age, I don't want to dis disappear immediately because sometimes you have a huge blob and that blob suddenly disappears. That's not cool. I want maybe the blob to then start shrinking and then only disappear once its you know its size reaches zero. So it kind of like fades out of the blobs, right? So let us try to do this. So if um, h is greater than max h, then we're gonna go my p dot size minus equal um let's go 0 0.5 and then if my p dot size is smaller than zero then we're gonna delete it so if we reach the maximum h we're gonna keep the particle around and we're gonna sh keep shrinking it until it reaches zero and then we're gonna delete it so they kind of all fade out a little bit let's see how that works out yeah. Looks a lot more natural. Ah, yeah. I, I'm not still not sure about the speed. Something you can do is add a bit of friction. And this is now getting like into like really like mm. 
So something you can do is you can change the speed. We can reduce the speed with every frame. So they kind of like go fast at the beginning and but then slow down. Like that's kind of how explosion works, you know? Uh, you have like a, no, obviously not in space, but you know, whatever. Or you, things moving fast in, in the beginning, but then they kind of, you know, slow down and stay where they are, right? Um, so something you can do here is every frame, we're gonna go my p dot sx uh, equals my p dot sx multiplied by 0 0.9. This is getting really mathy now. So we're gonna take the speed and we're gonna like multiply it by 0 0.9, which means it gets a little bit smaller. And then next frame, just still a bit smaller, a bit smaller, a bit smaller, a bit smaller. And at the beginning, it, it shrinks very fast, but then it slows down and kind of like gets smaller and smaller. Uh, just a little bit once it's it's, it's uh, already moving slow. So this is kind of like this idea of friction. Um, and we're gonna do the same thing with speed y. And again, we're kind of like slowing down the speed. We're not slowing down, changing the position of the particles, but we're slowing down at speed at which the particles are expanding. So at the beginning, they're moving very fast and then they should slow down. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. So you can see they stop now and then fade out in place. That's what we want. We want to have like this fast movement at the beginning and then slowing down. And this allows us to maybe then speed up the particles at the beginning. So you can move really fast at the beginning and then slow down. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that, that looks right to me. So now I want to maybe uh, increase the friction. So it's uh, they slow down. So, so the explosion is not quite as big. Yeah. yeah. Maybe too much friction. So 8.5. Yeah. Okay. Now, something I, I see here now is I don't really see a lot of smoke. I only see the purple, the, the, the dark red color at the end. And that's because of lifespan, the lifespan of our particles is um, is very short now so that we never reach the phase where it gets gray so i want to tweak those colors again a little bit um so yeah this should be 15 and then this should be somewhere in between there so let's go 12. let's see how that looks <laughs> Oh yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, something I also want to do is, um, I don't like how it's just like a blob of particles. I want to spawn like one big particle, one big explosion in the center. Uh, so it's... Uh, so we have like this big flash and then all the particles coming out of the flash. Because we just right now we're spawning like a whole bunch of big, uh, particles scrunched up in the center and some of them are, you know, big, small and so forth. But you have like this little blob and I want us to have like a big blob. So um, let's see how that works. I just want to, I want to see how that works. I'm just going to copy all of this stuff and put it outside of the loop. Oops. Hey, here's Christian from the future real quick. Um, so Christian from the past just did something here that I think uh, we've never really explained. So I wanted to spell this out. Uh, something you can do and I always use, I think I explained it already, uh, is that you can select some text and then you can press the tab key and this will increase the indentation of the selected text. Uh, but something that Christian just did here right now was um, decreasing the indentation. And you do this by selecting some text and then pressing shift and tap. So shift and tap will decrease the indentation and tap will increase the indentation. Um, both of these are really, really good shortcuts if you want to uh, change the indentation for you know, a whole bunch of text. All right. And this explosion should not move at all. It will be stationary, this one big explosion. Uh, the H will be zero. So it will start white. And the size will be actually as big as possible. Let's, let's set it to four at the beginning. And maximum H, I'm gonna, I wanna actually set it to a relatively low maximum H. So just 
10 just so it's like i want to see it disappear and then you know i want to see the the cloud that is rendered on top i want to see that take over very quickly and that we add it to the to the particles okay let's see how that works yeah you can see at the beginning there's there's like a let's let's make it even bigger let's make it just way too big let's just make it 10 there's like a huge yeah you can see that right you can see how there's like this big circle let's give this big circle the max age of zero so it immediately starts shrinking yeah that's better um, so now maybe we give it uh, make it a bit smaller let's go with eight yeah now something I notice is that explosion is not exactly centered at where uh, the 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 enemies are let's see how did we did we tweak this we tweaked this right let's see an update function where do we explode Ah, oh, we didn't tweak this see we're spawning the explosion at the top left corner of the sprite we are set, set the position of the sprite is always the top left corner but we want to spawn it at the center of it right so we want to add four uh, to the do the position of the uh, ex explosion, we want to take the position of the sprite, which is the top left corner, and we're going to add four pixels to it, so the explosion is exactly centered at uh, the uh, the enemy, and that looks good to me. That's a good explosion. So as you can see, you can tweak this a lot. I've been tweaking this a lot. I've been adding new properties and so forth. There's a lot you can do. And you can maybe already see where, you know, why people spent so much time tweaking the particles and creating, like, maybe you can create the different types of particles that behave differently. Maybe, you know, after a particle, you know, reaches its maximum age, it turns on a different particle, you know. There's just, just so many things you can do using code to kind of like change the behavior of the particles. But, the guiding principle is like to make this thing look cool and fun. And I think we achieve this. Um, something I, I'm paying attention to is that the explosion looks m like chunky and massive. That it looks as if something that that you know was created by the sprite exploding. That is bigger. That it has volume. That it feels like it's volume. That it feels like the parts that the you know th the object that exploded consisted of. That they are actually being you know spread around. A bigger volume you know just thrown into space i want to see the violence of the explosion i want to see the fast movements um but i don't want the explosion to get too big you know i just want to then want to like cover the entire screen i want to have like a nice balance here and i feel like we kind of achieve that maybe maybe we could tone this down a little bit uh, but that's something that we're going to see about in 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 the future for now, let me do some cleanup. Uh, I want to delete this old explosion here. I will be not going to use it anymore. This sprite-based explosion. <sighs> I'm going to just delete all of this stuff. Uh, if you want to keep using this for some kind of effect that you have yourself, that's fine. Mm, but for now, I, this is not something I want to be using. But something I want to keep in mind, that something that you can also pull off is instead of like having blobs that I had here, like the, the circles that I'm, I'm expanding, you could have um smaller explosions like you can like draw your own like you know like, like you had like this bullet uh, sprite here you can create like an animation of, of like small explosion and then have a big explosion that consists of small explosion that works and you can you can see this in a lot of older games where you have like explosions that are made up of small explosions so maybe that would be a fun thing to actually uh maybe ex explore in a doggy zone speaking of which let us move on to the doggy zone well, unsurprisingly, the, uh, the doggy zone for this time around is going to be just focus on the explosion and tweak it even further. Make it your own, make it custom, uh, get into the habit of like, like playing around with those particles. I think this is a very, very fun thing to experiment with. And I think it can be really rewarding. And I think it's like this really nice playground for you to get really comfortable with kind of like using these kind of like objects that have a bunch of properties and then you know uh, making things happen with code and not necessarily by just you know just drawing sprites of it right so for example one thing that you can try out remember how we had like the little 
dot particles. You know what looks really cool if you have dot particles combined with the blob particles. So not only you have like the blob particles that we have here, where it's just like these, these puffy, puffy clouds, right? Puffy clouds. But also at the same time, maybe faster, you see like a bunch of um, pixels, individual pixels going out faster. So we kind of like have like this, those two particle types of particle systems overlaid with each other. There's different ways of solving this. You can have just like two completely separate particle systems, one for uh, for um, dots and the other one for, for blobs for the circles. Uh, but you can also have one system that kind of like supports different types of particles, and you have like a property that just says type in an if statement uh, that kind of like checks for what type we're, are we drawing, and, and and depending on that, it does different code. It's going to be up to you. Another thing that's fun to do is that not have dots, but lines uh, that go in the direction in which the uh, particles flying. That kind of like feels even more like sparks. And if you have these particles, then maybe that's something that you can also add to the hit effect. When you actually hit the enemy, you can see maybe sparks flying away. That might be might be fun. Another thing that you can add to the explosion that is maybe not necessarily particle based is kind of like a shock wave. Like just have like a circle, not filled one, but just like a you know a circle just going out and then maybe fading out. Now might be a cool thing to, to, to add. How? It's going to be up to you. You have to figure this out. Again, maybe it's a whole new array of objects that you have to add on top of the particles. Maybe uh, there's some different way of solving this. It's up to you. Now, if you're really, really, you know, if you're really like pixel art based kind of person, then I would encourage you to try the uh, sprite based explosions. Maybe I will show some examples of how this looks like, but yeah, basically you have like little explosions like this, basically like explosion like this, maybe more frames, but instead of being like so big, it's actually small. It's just like as big as, as this, eight times eight. And then instead of drawing the circles that I was talking about, you draw individual sprites that are, and um, you know, the animation of the explosion. And I think this can also look very, very nice and detailed and, you know, like really crunchy. Uh, because right now the, the, the those uh, those clouds look a little bit soft, you know, they kind of like look look a little bit uh, a little like like um, like vector drawings a little bit. Uh, but um, with the with the sprite animation, you can get all the details in the explosion, and that can look really really fun. Finally, last challenge, uh, like a completely different approach here. Um, so right now the enemies are exploding. How about the player explodes as well when they get hit? Now, um, you can just like, the, the easy way of doing this is just making the same explosion, but apply it to the player. That's the easy way of doing this. The difficult way of doing this is using the same particle system, but that look, you know, explosion that looks different when the player explodes. For example, what if when the player explodes, um, the explosion is going to be blue? That's a challenge right there. Lots of challenges for the for the doggy zone, but I think I've got you uh, created a nice little sandbox here that I think is really really worth exploring. And that's why one of the things that I want the most from you on, on this doggy zone is actually to post results. I want to see your beautiful, beautiful explosions. I want to see the, what you came up with. And I want to see it like on, on Twitter, like you can just post it on Twitter and maybe maybe tag me or lazy devs, you know, so I can see the results or you can just join our Discord. We have a channel, especially for the shmup and you can post your GIFs. And again, you can always press F9 and it saves a GIF of that explosion to the desktop and you can just post it there and just show off your particle programming skills. And of course, this is also the moment where I will give a big shout out to the good people at Coffee, to the to the Coffee crew that made this series possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazy devs. Mmm, yes, that was a really, really nice episode. I really love digging into the particles. And I hope we're gonna see some beautiful results from you guys. Now, moving over, what we're going to do next is I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to stay one more episode and, and maybe tweak a little bit um, the, you know, all the juiciness effect. Maybe there's something I will come up with, but otherwise something that's also on the horizon. Again, not sure if next episode is also to think about, you know, the general game. How are we, can we beat the game? Are the levels, is, you know, what is the actual flow of the game? How are we, can we actually do something? 
and maybe think about you know how we can set up different enemies with different behaviors actually make this a challenging game and not just like you know shooting fish in a barrel but that's something that will comes up on the next episode see you next time around guys bye bye